Hello, my name is Methat El Masri. Today's tutorial is about visualizing data with chart.js in an ASP.NET 6.0 application. With time, the volume of data in our databases increases exponentially. Excessive raw data is simply noise if we cannot summarize it, analyze it, and visualize the information. We will look at one way of visualizing data using chart.js. This is a free JavaScript library that you can use within any web application technology. We will, of course, see how we can use chart.js in an ASP.NET 6.0 web app. I will be using Visual Studio Code and the SQLite database in this tutorial. Let's do it. The version of .NET that I have is 6.0.400. I will create a Razor Pages app that uses individual authentication. The reason I'm using individual authentication is because I want to create a project that supports SQLite and Entity Framework. That is .NET New Razor and the framework version that I'm using is .NET 6.0 and I'll be using individual authentication and the output directory would be chart js razor let me go into that directory and in here i'll make a directory called models because i will be needing it later on i'm going to open up my code in vs code for sample data i'm going to be using a CSV file that represents students. I'm going to copy this file and put it into the data folder. And this is what this file looks like. It's got four columns, student ID, first name, last name, and school. And I have about 58 of these rows of data items. In order to import this CSV file into my database, I'm going to use a package called CSV helper. So let me add that package. The command for that would be .NET add package CSV helper. To represent each student object, I will create a class called student in my models folder. And the properties for the student will look like this. I've got a student ID, a last name, first name, and school. Since I'm using Entity Framework, I'm going to go into the Application DB Context class and add this property that basically tells the database that we have a collection of students that's based on the student class. Let me resolve this. We are going to import some data from the CSV file. So I'm going to add a method here that's going to help me import the data into a CSV file. And this is what the method looks like. I will first resolve these namespaces. Now, the CSV file is being read from the data students.csv file. And this logic here simply reads the contents of that file and populates a list of student objects. And it returns it whenever this method is called because the return type is a collection of student objects. How do we use this method? Well, we're going to add an on model creating method here. And this on model creating method calls the get students method, which returns a list of students. And it pretty much adds it to the database using this command. At this point, we can add an entity framework migration. So with this command, .NET EF migrations add, the name of migration is students, and the output directory would be data migrations. When this command is completed, we should see in the data migrations folder, this numbered underscore student.cs file. And you will see here that there are a lot of insert statements that are pretty much going to insert the data in the database. In order for the database to be created, we need to execute this command, .NET EF database update. This will actually create the database and populate the tables with data. So let's have a look. Now I have 
an extension here that allows me to see my SQLite data. So I recommend that you install this extension. With this extension, I can go to my app.db file, which is really the SQLite database file, choose open database. It opens a tab down here. If I expand this, I should be able to see my students data right here. And here it is. In fact, there are 58, but here it's just showing me the first 50. At this stage, we can start using chart.js to visualize the data that we have. If you navigate to this site, chartjs.org, you will find all the documentation, samples, and everything that you need in order to use chart.js. Let's click on documentation, and you will see here the chart types that you can create. There's area charts, bar charts, etc., etc. And this is what the bar chart looks like. This is what the bubble chart looks like, and so on and so forth. We're going to create five different types of charts today. If you click on getting started down here, you can copy the address of this chart.js, which is available online. So let us copy this. We will transform the index page to display our chart. And I will do a dependency injection here for the context class. So that would be application db context and I'll just call this context and assign context to underscore context. Next, I'll create a bindable property that contains the data so that I can read it from the CS HTML page. And that would look like this. I will have a property here that is a list of school count objects and it will be called chart data. In the onGet method, I will add this code here. At the top, I'm declaring a list of stool count objects, and the name of that list is students in school. This is my group by statement. I'm grouping by the school, and the key for my group by is the name of the school, and the count is the number of students in a particular school. And I'm so in the index.cshtml, we can pretty much add this script tag to load chart.js into our index page. The kind of data that we're going to chart today is a count of the number of students in a specific school. So we will chart out the number of students in the School of Medicine, the number of students in the School of Nursing, etc. So we need to create a class that just holds the name of the school and the number of students inside it. So in the models folder, I will create another class, which I will call the school count. And this class just has two properties and it will look like this. We have the name of the school and the number of students in that school. So we will go into the pages index.cshtml.cs, which is the code behind file. And we will transform this so that we can make a query against the database and do a group by statement to evaluate how many students are in each school. So the first thing we want to do is do dependency injection of our context class. So I will declare a private variable here that represents the DB context class, ordering by descending so that I get the most populated school at the top and the least populated school at the bottom. I'm converting that to a list. Here, I'm adding the data into a list of school count objects, which is this students in school. So this is simply adding the data that I'm receiving from my query into this list. And then I assign this list to chart data, which happens to be this bindable property over here. Now I should be able to read from chart data in my CSHTML file and process it. At this stage, we should be able to run this application in debug mode and have a look at the contents of this list. 
So I'm going to click on debug and I put a breakpoint right here. So we should be able to see what the contents are when the app stops. Sure enough, the application stopped right here and you can see that I have five rows of data. In the School of Nursing, I've got 15 students. The School of Business, likewise. School of Mining has 13. School of Computing has nine. And the School of Medicine has only six. So we know that our data is being read and this list is being populated correctly. I'll stop the debug. We can now focus our attention on index.cshtml that will display for us our charts. We have already pointed to the chart.js library. Let us delete this and add a div to contain our chart. The most important thing is to have a canvas element to contain our chart. Over here, you can see that I have a canvas element. I've set the width to 100 and the height to 300. I have a title for my chart here, students by school, and we should actually take this and make that the title of our page. In fact, maybe we should make this variable the actual title. So I'm just going to display this like that. So all we did here was create a canvas, as you can see. The next step is to use the objects that are declared in the chart.js so that we can create our chart. We're going to declare an empty array called count and another empty array called schools. This counts array is going to hold the number of students in a school and this school array is going to hold the names of the various schools. We're going to iterate through each element in this chart data collection. And in case you're not familiar with this syntax, this basically is going to pass this command as if it was HTML. So this statement here is going to be considered to be part of the JavaScript. We're going to use the push command in JavaScript and insert into it the item in this collection chart data. We do the same thing by pushing the name of the school inside of the school's JavaScript array. Here we're declaring a variable called school. And the idea here is we have a label for our chart. The numbers will come from this JavaScript array count. The background color is where you can customize the color of each bar in the chart. The border color is customizing the border for each of these bars. The border of the bar will be one and line tension will be zero. Another property is the data set values. The data set values, the labels are going to come from this array schools and the data set will be based on this school object that is essentially the design of the bars. Now the bar can have options. This indicates that it is a vertical bar. Responsive means that it adjusts itself. It doesn't need to maintain aspect ratio because we've set it to false. And the scales basically is the matrix that we will have when this bar chart is created. In this plugin section, we can display a text title. Now, this code is what actually instantiates the chart. So the chart will be injected into this element in our HTML. So if we go up here, our chart has an ID bar chart and it's a canvas. So our chart will be injected inside of this canvas. The type of the chart is a bar chart. The data is coming from this object data set values and the options are based on these bar chart options. So now let us run our application and see what it does. 
So I will go into the command line here and type in .NET watch. This is what my chart looks like. If I hover over this, you can see that it says that the nursing school has 15 students, business has 15, mining has 13, computing has 9, and medicine has 6. This is exactly the number that we determined when we debugged the application. This title, Students by School, comes from here, Plugin Students by School. Next, let us create a horizontal bar chart. What I'll do is add another div up here to contain a horizontal bar chart. And that would look something like this. So here I have another canvas and the ID is horizontal bar chart with the same size. At the bottom of my script section here, right under the previous bar chart, I'm going to create another bar chart here and I'll call that the horizontal bar chart. But what I'm going to do is I'll make a copy of this bar chart options. I'll copy it into this horizontal bar chart options and I'm going to change the index axis to Y. You can see that over here the index axis is X. I'll change that to Y over here and then I'm going to delete the scales property. I don't need that when I'm doing a horizontal bar chart. So this is going to be deleted from that collection. And then I instantiate a new chart of type bar, but what makes it horizontal is simply the fact that I change the index axis from X to Y. Now let us see what that looks like. And you can see here, I now have a horizontal bar chart. To complete my journey with charts, I want to add three more charts. The pie chart, the donut chart, and the polar area chart. These three charts use the same logic for rendering. Therefore, I will add three separate sections in my div area for these three separate charts. I'm going to come up here and just as I did for my vertical bar chart and horizontal bar chart, I'm going to add three more sections here for the three new charts that I want to create. And they are par chart. And here's the canvas for that. It's called pie chart. Another one for donut chart. And this is the canvas for that. And then finally, we have the polar area chart. And this is the canvas for the polar area chart. Then I will add the JavaScript that will render these three charts. So I'll go to the very bottom of my document here and under the horizontal bar chart, I'll add the logic for the three additional charts. And this is what it looks like. Just like I did before where I copied this bar chart options, I'm going to do that again, copy the bar chart options to a pie chart options variable. I will delete the index axis because a pie chart is neither horizontal nor vertical. And I also delete the scales, which I did before. So here I'm going to instantiate a new chart of type pie. Everything is the same except that for the options, I'm using these options that I created for the pie chart. Now I will do the same for the donut chart and it's using the same options. So this logic is identical to this logic. The only difference is this is generating a pie chart. This is generating a donut chart. And finally, the polar area chart is also identical to the others. This one generates a polar area charts, just like the donut chart and the pie chart. So now if we go back to our code, you will see that we have three more charts. We have the pie chart, we have the donut chart, and we have the polar area charts. And these are different visualizations of the same thing. You can hover over these sections and it will tell you what data it is rendering. I hope you found this video useful. And if you liked it, please give it the thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.